Hey, Ron Coddington here from Military Images Magazine. Coming to you today to talk about the man that's pictured here. Uh, he is George Proctor Kane, who many of you may recognize as the marshal uh, in Baltimore in uh, 1861. He is very, very, very well known. Um, he was born in Baltimore in 1817. And I'm going to talk about him uh, in just a minute. But before I do, I also want to say that I often talk about and think about how photography in the 19th century had an effect on the culture. And uh, as the technology changed, as photography came more baked into what men and women did in their daily lives, uh, it certainly had an impact and it became more and more a part of the fabric of the culture. Hooked to that was this idea that came out really beginning in the 1840s that photography should play more of a utilitarian role, which is to say it didn't always need to be a format for portrait photography, that it could be used for different practical purposes. And this is where George Kane comes in. As I mentioned, he's the marshal in Baltimore. Uh, he comes into the position in 1860, uh, and he has a pretty big job on his hands because Baltimore is filled with mob violence, uh, the gangs uh, roaming the streets, very similar to the well-known movie Gangs of New York. This is what George P. Kane comes into in 1860. His job is to clean up the city and to bring law and order to Baltimore. Of course, he comes in at a unique, unique time uh, during the 1860 presidential campaign. Lincoln is elected, uh, and as they're planning the route for President-elect Lincoln to come through Baltimore. Alan Pinkerton is doing his groundwork. He meets with Kane or learns about Kane, doesn't really trust him, uh, and therefore has this surreptitious movement of Lincoln um, nine hours before he was actually scheduled to go through Baltimore. Uh, Lincoln gets a lot of bad press for sneaking through the city. Uh, during odd hours, uh, and Kane is maybe partly to blame for at least casting some doubt uh, on Pinkerton's, uh, or leading Pinkerton to make an assessment. And then, of course, most people really know Kane for being the guy who uh, is leading the ninth, the uh, the sixth Massachusetts Infantry through Baltimore on April nineteenth, eighteen sixty one. Uh, the famous Pratt Street riot is the result. A couple months later, in June, uh, Kane is unceremoniously arrested and put in jail, more or less as a political prisoner for fourteen months. This is the Cain that we know about, uh, good and bad, this is Cain. He also made an interesting contribution to the history of photography, uh, and I think very few people know about it. I stumbled upon it the other day as I was doing some research, uh, and it came in the form of an article, a relatively small news brief that was part of a Baltimore newspaper called The Daily Exchange. And this is, appears, this article appears in the February 26th, 1861 issue. So February 26th, 1861, um, we are uh, just weeks away from Fort Sumter and another week after that away from the Pratt Street riot. This article, of course, has nothing to do with any of that. It has nothing to do with President Lincoln. It has all, everything to do with the subject line, which is rogues gallery. I'm going to read this article to you. It's relatively short. And here's how it goes. During the past few weeks, Marshall Kane, 
It's our man pictured here. Has been busy at work getting up a rogues gallery. When the officers encountered a well-known thief, he is arrested and compelled to sit for his likeness. The pictures will be hung up in the marshal's office, by which means the police officers will become acquainted with the countenances of the thieves when they meet them on the street. The detectives are well acquainted with the thieves of New York, Philadelphia, Boston, and other places. And when they visit our city, they will be arrested and pictures taken of them. So there's Marshall Kane with a really interesting idea, which is almost, it's sort of similar to mug shots, right? This idea of taking photographs of criminals um, so that they can keep a visual record of them. So here's Kane in February of 1861 in those weeks leading up to the Civil War, uh, introducing this idea of having a rogues gallery. And this, of course, is part of his larger plan to be able to crack down on the criminal element in Baltimore and bring law and order to the city. Also a great little piece of photo history. And um, that's what I've got on George Kane and the Rogues Gallery. So thanks for tuning in. We'll have more videos coming up in the future on other individuals and how they touched the history of photography and the history of the Civil War and other events in the 19th century. Take care. Bye.